We've been doing a lot of building lately, and frankly, that's gross. I mean, in the previous episode of Hermitcraft, I might have actually said that I wanted to do terraforming over doing a redstone project. I feel sick. So today's Hermitcraft episode is going to be all about redstone, all about technical builds, all about farming, and all about getting as many resources as possible. I think it should be fun. I think it should be cool to work on these projects, and I'm just... I'm excited. I actually have a bit of a beaming smile on my face right now. Except that beaming smile has disappeared now that I've realised I'm eating jacket potatoes. What am I doing? What? What am I doing? Get in the fire. I suppose it hasn't been 100% building because in the previous episode of Hermitcraft we did design and build this little basalt generator right here which is actually ridiculously fast. I mean, it's not the fastest design out there probably. I haven't actually looked around but it's, it's definitely there's definitely ways to make it quicker but for what we need, I mean, it will give you a full inventory in way under five minutes. How much basalt could you possibly need, really? Uh, but at the minute, it's not giving us any basalt at any amount of time because there's no pickup system. All of the basalt is just dropping down onto the floor. So that's not really that useful. So I guess we have to design something to, to pick up the items. But as we know from the gold farm, item pickup systems aren't exactly plain sailing in the nether because of course we can't use water, so we can't push items around. We have to make use of pistons and things. And I, I think I've come up with a way to actually do it Sensibly, kind of. I mean, if we use a piston feed tape and we kind of create like a block conveyor belt that pushes the items over the hoppers, that could that could work and it could look really, really cool. Let's give it a shot, shall we? No testing. Let's just start building because that's never once been a bad idea. I am starting to realize that just a floor of hoppers probably would have sufficed, but I've started building this thing now and I like the idea of the piston feed tapes moving the items around. So I've got my pickups. So this is what's going to be picking up the items. And my piston feed tapes are going to be pushing the items so that they travel across the top of these hoppers right here, dropping into the chests. Oh no! Oh no, that's not good! That wasn't wise! I was... I came up with a new technique of how to build downwards and then I... 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 Well, there goes my plan of getting a thousand levels. That didn't last long, did it? Alright, a lot of the redstone is now all done. We've got all of the piston feed tape pistons in place. I've got all of the timing circuits. I've got the redstone lines that actually connect them up. So now I'm just in the process of building up a little monostable circuit right here, which is going to have a redstone clock running into it. And that is actually going to be how these piston feed tapes operate. Now, I wonder, how fast can these things be? What we're looking out for here is I need the pistons to have retracted by the time the next set of pistons fire. I actually think we're clear. Those pistons at the bottom have retracted by the time those pistons fire, haven't they? Or am I going crazy? No, I think we're in a good situation. I think we can all agree that now it's got the blocks in place, this looks ridiculously cool. It's like the Minecraft equivalent of a chainsaw. Right, let's see. Let's see if this actually will do what I think it does. Okay, that's great. That's great. The fact that it's doing that is fantastic. Now, if items land here... <laughs> yes! This... This is the coolest. So we're going to watch the basalt just gradually get pushed along and then end up in these hoppers here. I mean, I, I couldn't be happier with this. Is it slightly ridiculous for the application that we have for it? Yes, yes, yes it is. Yes, absolutely. And that is why... That's why it's great. If a piece of TNT now blows this thing up, I'm going to be very, very, very upset. Like, beyond upset. And it probably would have done. I've missed a block. I've missed a very important block. So the TNT could have completely missed this obsidian right here and just landed on this thing and just, just blown it to bits. After doing some pretty serious checks, I think we might be ready to activate this thing for the first time. So here goes. Oh, oh gosh. Well, that's not where I wanted to go. <laughs> I've ended up in the system. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I mean, is it working? It's kind of difficult to see when you got stuck inside a piston feed tape. It looks like everything's actually working. Is that getting blown up? No, it's all just going into the hoppers. So this thing's actually functioning. <laughs> this thing's actually working. And it looks fantastic. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's so overkill. We could have just had a line of hoppers. But I'm so glad that we did something as ridiculous as this. Because it makes me incredibly happy watching it all function. I can't believe it actually works. And not only does it function, it functions well. I mean, look, this is one half of all the basalt that's coming in. It's coming in at the maximum speed a hopper can handle, and then a little bit extra. I mean, look at it! 
We're never going to need this much basalt. A gas just spawned on this thing and got blown up by TNT. I think it's about time that we actually spawn proof this area. Yeah, that seems smart. I love the fact that now not only is this farm ridiculously loud because of the Pikmin, but also you can hear pistons and TNT in the background as well, as if this place wasn't noisy enough. Spawn proofing is a lot more scary when you have that noise above you. There's probably about 100 Pikmin up there all wanting to kill me. But the fact that they're up there and not down here means that my spawn proofing seems to have worked. There's no, no zombie Pikmin in the system. There's no zombie Pikmin here. There's one zombie Pikmin that is there by those pistons, but there's nothing I can do about that because there's slime blocks there, so I can't exactly spawn proof an area where slime blocks are going to be pushed across. I would say we've done a good job. And in the process of spawn proofing, for the most part, I left this thing running, and as you can see, it has created a large quantity of basalt. Yeah, this is far more than we're ever going to need. One successful job completed. Wait, hang on a minute. If I walk over here... <laughs> oh my goodness! That could be the death of me. I have to be real careful, but that is absolutely hilarious. I'd say the job wasn't successfully completed until that. Now it's fully successfully completed. Which means we can now move on to the next important thing that I want to work on in today's episode. It's been ages since we've done anything in the industrial district. You know, we built up the sugarcane farm, we built up the mega storage system, and then I built up this rather ridiculous looking thing. I still think this might be one of the evilest, most ominous looking builds ever. They, it, it looks like something out of Independence Day, right? We built all of this stuff and then we've left for like a couple months. So it's time to get back into business and build up another mega farm. But I guess before we do, I should probably update my map. I mean, if we look at Iskals, Iskals is up to date. He's got his creeper head, which looks awesome. He's got his building, which, I mean, I can't help but notice there's a very grey theme going on here. But yeah, his building that has no back to it, that's very clearly visible as well. Let's see what this, let's see what this looks like. Well, that looks pretty cool. I mean, it's very... Neither of our maps are particularly stunning, are they? <laughs> Neither of them look that great. And also, that is annoying. Goodness gracious me, that's annoying. The miss spacing at the end, are you joking me? But, I mean, yeah, none of them are going to win any awards for beauty. But they are purely, purely functional. So we've got two options when it comes to farms. We've got bamboo. Or alternatively, we've got melon and pump. Which I'm assuming pump refers to pumpkin. I personally am in the mood for a little bit of melon and pumpkin action. Just because I think that could be useful for villager trading. Which it's always good to get tons upon tons of emeralds. However, I would like to build up some form of mega bamboo farm at some point soon. Because it's a really good fuel source to have inside your furnaces. Because it's fully automatically farmable. But I think today I'm just well in the mood for building a melon and pumpkin farm. They're just fun farms to build. But here's the thing. To construct this, I am going to need tons upon tons of stone. I don't have, I really don't have much stone to be honest with you. And I need a bunch of it to make all the stone bricks and the stone slabs that I'm actually going to build this thing out of. Which means, well... You know what that means. Well, that was fun, and it was also hugely, hugely successful. First off, I got a ton of stone, which is exactly why we came down here, but most importantly, I managed to get myself almost two stacks of diamonds, which, given the length of time that I was mining, is ridiculous. I just got so lucky. I kept finding massive veins of them, and we've ended up... Well, I mean, that's... that ain't bad. My diamonds chest is starting to look incredibly impressive. I've still got lots of work to do, but it's looking good. But obviously, the diamonds were not the reason for that mission. The reason was, yeah, we need tons of stone. I mean, look at this. This, this is a lot of stone here, and we need to replicate pretty much this over in this area. I guess stage number one is to build up the minecart tracks. Obviously, a melon and pumpkin farm has a very different design to a sugarcane farm, but some of the fundamentals are the same. We're going to be doing it in strips. We're going to be picking up the items using minecarts. So that means that we need to do the loading and unloading system first. But that does require a tiny bit of planning of how we're actually going to create this farm. Because the crops will grow faster if they're hydrated. 
and I think I've come up with a good way to do this. So I've got a strip of four on the edge, then a strip of five in the middle, because that's being hydrated from both sides, and then another strip of four on the sides, with water running in these gaps here. That should hydrate everything, keep everything working well, whilst also giving us plenty of space for growth. So now I have to place about a billion slabs. That is that is the plan at this point in time, is just to place <laughs> thousands upon thousands of slabs. It's not, not really that exciting. Placing slabs, placing slabs, they're the same as full blocks but shorter. Placing slabs, placing slabs. Right click them with a bucket, they'll hold water. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> that's oh I'm doing anything to keep myself entertained here that's a lot of slabs so one song and many thousands of slabs later we have got ourselves one full platform now obviously this is just one piece of the, the puzzle we've got a lot of dirt to place we've got a lot of rails to place who knows we might have a full album by the end of this video <laughs> for the different blocks the fact that green sells dirt is both genius and also annoying okay because I kind of don't want to buy dirt because it's so readily available, but also I kind of don't want to go out and gather up dirt myself. So I'm left in this situation where I'm, well, look at me, I'm buying dirt. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, it is still a bit of a kick in the teeth every single time I go to the nether portal and see that I've got zero votes. I've actually got negative one vote. How have I managed to do that? I'm going to absolve all responsibility there and continue to blame Grumbot because clearly he's the one responsible. I should probably go check up on him at some point. I hope he's okay in his little environment. Anyway, I'm now in the process of chucking in all of the redstone blocks or at least clearing out the space so then I can chuck in the redstone blocks that are going to power all our powered rails and... Yeah, I've kitted myself out with rails too. If there's one thing that I'm very thankful for is that I built an iron farm early in the Hermitcraft season, so I've never struggled with that sort of thing. This build is looking more and more gnarly by the second. I mean, look at it. This looks mean. And I'm also really considering swapping out this floor, mining it all downwards, and just covering it with slime blocks because then it'll be spawn proof and I can never die of ball damage. In fact, let me know what you think. What would you like to see as the floor of my industrial district? Because you guys will always have better ideas than me. You're collectively smarter that sounded like the most backhanded compliment ever it's like collectively you're smarter than me singularly no the minecart rails are gradually going into position so i'm hoping that we should have a minecart right here that we can power from this block this little powered rail will send off our hopper minecart picking up all the melons and pumpkins and things it's gonna get full very quickly now that i think about it we might need to have these on like a a serious cycle because yeah, that's a, they're going to have to pick up loads of melons and pumpkins now I think about it. But I guess we'll cross that issue when it comes to it. The minecarts are going to travel off to the end, loop around the back, and then pop back into this position. Now, the reason that they're looping back into this one position so we have a gap between them is because if you place too many minecarts next to one another, they kind of clip into one another and then almost self-power themselves. It's a little bit strange, a little bit frustrating, but it means that we can't just have a line of minecarts here. I don't know if I'm going crazy, but I'm starting to find this more and more satisfying the more that I do it. I'm just gradually going along, placing my rails, pick blocking like a madman, just doing my thing. Yeah, I can definitely tell from the tone of my voice, going crazy. Why is it the minecart rail stuff is always so fiddly? So if I if I place the minecart rail, okay, okay, that's connected up to that. And then this. Alright, that worked. That worked. Powered rail here. And okay. Oh, Oh, no! We got there in the end. So now it's time for the next ridiculously repetitive task. Placing in all the dirt. I mean, I swear, you know, I, I did this so that I could work on a nice technical project. This has not been a technical project, and this, this has probably been the least technical thing I've ever done in my entire life. I'm just repeatedly right-clicking. My right-clicker is going to get worn out by the end of today's episode. With all the dirt in, this is now looking completely wild. The industrial district is starting to look insane, and this is only with three far Do we only have three farms in here? Yeah, we only have three farms in this thing. I think I'm scheduled to have around about 15, 20. Can you imagine how insane it's going to look when this thing is actually filled to the brim? That's going to look completely bonkers. Anyway, with the dirt now done, it is now time for the next stage of the process, which is where things begin to get a little bit more exciting. All of the monotonous tasks are now pretty much completed. It's now time for the slightly more technical bit. So we have to do we have to do the item dropping, we have to do all of the flying machines, we have to do some logic there. There's some interesting bits to do, but before we crack on with that, there's something that I really need to check up on. In the previous episode of Hermitcraft, I placed this sign right here. This sign sends Mr. Iskal off into the nether to another fortress location where I really want to build a wither farm. And, I mean, the sign is still here. 
but then so is this. <laughs> so, I mean, clearly he's just not clearing up his base. Maybe I want to check up to see if he's actually been over there because I'm interested to hear his thoughts and also what he has to say because I really need his help. This location is an absolute nightmare to get into, by the way. I, I've gone here maybe three or four times and every single time I've managed to get myself a little bit lost. I've had to mine through the nether. I mean, it's just... It doesn't seem very easily accessible. I think job number one with this thing will definitely be set up some form of nether tunnel. That seems important. Okay, I've arrived at the nether fortress and it looks like there is something here. So <laughs> there's my initial sign. And this clearly points towards the fact that Iskal has been nearby because no one else on the server says the word Omega. He is the only person. Does that does that mean yes? I never know with Iskal. Does that mean yes? And what does this square mean? What's he done? Is this him protecting himself? <laughs> this might have been him protecting himself from wither skeletons and things. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe he's built... Maybe this is the farm. Maybe this is what you have to do to make a crazy wither farm. Oh, I know nothing. But it sounds like... Oh my goodness, that guy is so close. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I should probably do something about it. I thought I could just kind of sit there and chill. <laughs> but yeah, it, it sounds like it's a positive. It sounds like we're going to be building a massive wither farm and I'm going to be rolling in wither skulls. Which is going to be cool, and this gal's going to roll in them with me. We're going to be... The pair of us are going to be rolling in with the skulls together. Enjoying ourselves. Rolling in them. Together. Cool. Okay, well this is big news. Alright, let's get back to the, uh... Let's get to the, the back to the old melon and pump farm. Which means... Inevitably getting lost again. I mean, it's going well at this point in time, but I imagine things are going to go south. Oh, that's a bastion. You will not see me dead in there. You will not see- I will never go in there. Anyway, I think it's about time that we get back to business. Now, if I sound a little bit different, it's because I'm actually in a completely different location right now. My patio is being done, but I really wanted to get this video finished, so I've got myself an Airbnb, and this is where I'm recording from. I currently have my entire computer set up, kind of dangled around the kitchen, and I'm recording from a dining table, and I'm surrounded by pillows and blankets. Also, I left my mouse at home, which means I've had to buy some really cheap, terrible one. <laughs> and it's, it's really awful. I take my regular mouse for granted. Anyway, seriously, let's get back to business. And that business involves a lot more slab placing. Yeah. I can't, I can't get enough of this stuff. Except these slabs are even more of a pain in the backside than the other ones. Ah, oh, that's an extra pain in the backside. They're a pain in the backside because they're not just straight lines. Instead, I have to create a checkerboard pattern out of them, and I think the smartest way to do that, instead of placing them as a checkerboard, because that would be a nightmare, I think I'll just do an entire area of slabs, a full area of slabs, and then I'll just go back and take out every single other block. I mean, that seems like a good move, especially now that I have this super easy technique. I mean, this is actually pretty much plain sailing. It's actually a little bit embarrassing, really. I moaned a lot about having to place all of these slabs, but it was probably the easiest task that I've done so far in today's video. <laughs> well, I mean, it is now done, so I guess we get on with the more exciting part now. Which is this. Yeah, not exactly thrilling, is it? But i got to say, now that it's all done, it does look pretty cool, doesn't it? Look at this thing. This is... This is really coming together. I also really like the strips. I don't think I've ever had those in previous designs before. I think I've just had little sources of water dotted through, which realistically is probably a little bit more efficient. But there's something about those strips that I really, really like. Okay, now we have a bit of designing to do. You see, I need to create a flying machine that pushes these slabs down and then pulls them back up again. Because the melons and the pumpkins, they're going to be growing underneath these slabs here. So the slabs are actually going to crush the melons and pumpkins. All the items are going to pop off. The mine carts are then going to pick up those items. But then these slabs then need to be retracted back upwards so that more melons and pumpkins can grow. It should be easy. But, I mean... I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it just yet. So let's pop through into the redstone testing world. After a surprisingly large amount of development time, I've actually come up with something that I think should do the trick that is really, really simple. Instead of trying to create one module for every strip, I just thought I'd create a one wide modular design that we could stack next to one another. Because some of our strips are four blocks wide, some of them are five blocks wide, there'd be different designs for each one. It makes a lot more sense that I just make one that you can stack. Now the question is, does it actually work? I haven't tested this thing yet, but it should. Yeah. 
I mean, that, that totally works. So the first sticky piston would pull the block upwards, and then the second sticky piston would push it back downwards, and obviously it works in both directions. It's very easy to overcomplicate a problem in your head. I was trying to make the pistons double fire and things like that, and I was trying to work out ways to do it, but if you just place two pistons next to one another, then you're gonna get the double fire. You have to worry about all that stuff. Simplest option is always the best. So with that simple option in mind, Let's hop onto the Hermitcraft server. Pistons are in place. This might just be one of the most satisfying noises in the world. Unintentionally incredibly satisfying. And this is definitely one of the least satisfying noises in the world. I mean... That's okay. That's horrible. Although it could be argued that it's so horrible that it's almost satisfying. Anyway, observers are now in place. Backwards facing pistons are now in place. A bunch of the other important stuff is now in place. And finally... Everything is now all in place. Make sure that all of my slime blocks and everything are removed because otherwise that could cause some problems. But no, this all looks good. So with the building of this flying machine, that means that this farm is now ready to be operational. All we have to do is do all of the item hookup systems. We need to work out a little bit of the timing stuff because I'm not sure how we're going to do that. And also obviously plant all of the melons and pumpkins, but it's ready to go. We have completed it, we have built up this absolutely mega farm, and it is going to be ridiculously efficient. I would say that's a job pretty much well done. I've really enjoyed recording this Hermitcraft episode despite the fact that it has been split over two locations, I've broken a keyboard, I've lost a mouse, and many other things. <laughs> it's been fun in the end, in the end it's been fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya! I think I will forever remember episode 38 of Hermitcraft Season 7 as the episode that almost never happened. But against all odds, it actually managed to get finished. Genuinely, it seems like everything has gone wrong. I mean, my space bar now doesn't work on my keyboard. Just to, just to add to my list of problems, it works every three hits. So there's like a one in three chance you're actually going to jump or you're just going to fall to your death.